Hello, and thank you for stopping by. And we're going to go over a step-by-step -step method to file your 2021 taxes um, all by yourself on your computer. A copy and paste method where you just, um, if it's digital, you just copy and paste what you see on the form and put it into the computer, just like you did when you were in, you know, grade school or anything like that. So um, it is, um, you know, it's a step-by-step -step process, so we will show you um, how to do um, each screen. And uh, what we are doing today is um, you can submit them free electronically online, both federal and state, as well as your city. And as long as you, ha as you have an adjusted gross income of $73,000 or less, um, it will be free to you, um, and your state might be free as well. Um, if you make more than $73,000 adjusted gross income, you can still use the same method. It will just cost you maybe an average of about $200 to do it because um, they will charge you if you make over $73,000 adjusted gross income. And uh, you could do this on your computer, your tablet, or your smartphone. Just follow along and then, you know, once I'm done, you can, you know, walk, you can walk through it again and then just do it on your own. And um, if it's your first time, it might take you about you know, two hours, assuming you have all your documents ready, it might take you two hours. Um, if you one and a half to two hours, if you're self-employed, it might take you uh, three hours. Just kind of be aware of that. Um, you can also feel free to print it out and mail them if you don't want to e-file um, once the software is done calculating it. And um, so what we will do is we will first go to uh, what you will need. Um, to file your taxes uh, this year, or should I say every year? Okay, so you would need just your personal information, like your social security number, your tax ID number, your spouse's name, if any, children's name and social security number, um, if they sent you an identity protection pin in the mail, you would need that. Um, also, um, you would need any dependents information, their date of birth, sources of income, such as um, if you were employed, W-2, unemployment, if you had, a lot of people had that recently, 1099-G, self-employed, a 1099, rental income, if any, retirement income, um, pension, Social Security, savings and investments, any investments, bank account, income. I know a lot of people did crypto this year. So we'll be going over the most common things that people will do. We're trying to go reach one of those. Uh, deductions for home ownership, charity donations, uh, medical expenses, if they were more than a certain amount, I think. Your health insurance form, very important, 1095A. Most people got a lot of credits this year, so you want to make sure you have that. Child care expenses, licensed daycare center payments, amount paid to a babysitter, um, educational expenses. If you went to school and you paid cash for your school, um, you can get some of that back. And what you will first do is you will go to um, irs.gov. And you will go to, you just type in irs.gov, as you can see at the top what I'm doing there, circling right there. And down over here goes File Your Taxes for Free. And you're just going to go down, you're going to click Guided Tax Preparation, AGF, $75,000 or less. And you're going to click, these companies you know are certified by the IRS, so they're like partners, so you know that they're legit. And um, it says Browse All. And um, you want to pick what's best for your state and your income level. This is for people who make 73000 or less to get the free filing. However, if you do make more than $73,000, um, you can certainly still use a lot of these major companies like TaxSlayer you can still use. Uh, you can still use um, Tax Act and um, OLT, but you'll just have to pay for it. So, And I have used Tax Act. I like this OLT because it's very user friendly. I'm going to pick OLT, but you can pick anyone you want. And I picked it because um, I know a lot of the websites like um, Tax Act and TurboTax have a lot of color, blue and red, which is very distracting. This it looks like a, a flat sheet of paper with only a little bit of gray and purple in it. So it's very relaxing on the eyes. It's very user friendly. And I, I just like the way it looks. So 
Uh, this is for any state of residence and they do free state and city. So I like this one. So I'm just going to pick OLT. So I click that one. And then once you sign up, um, you would go over to OLT.com and we already gathered our W-2s as we talked about uh, over here. Your W-2s, your unemployment, 1099, your self-employment. Um, well, 1099G is for unemployment and 1099 regular is for self-employment. So we had talked about that you were already going to gather those up for yourself. Okay. And then once we go to irs.gov, we find a partner. I picked OLT. We're going to go over and click for OLT. You're just going to sign up and log in. And they're going to ask you a lot of security questions. Make sure you have to have your driver's license number to sign up. You can put in um, you can put in a a um, a fake driver's license number until you find your real one at the end. You can just go back if you don't have it with you right now. You can always um, change the numbers later, so just be aware of that. Um, just make sure it's the correct amount. Like if they say put in nine numbers, put in nine. But um, just make sure you do have that. So. Um, this one I already put in everything, so we just go through it fast. You don't have to wait for me to type and everything like that. So um, once you log in, it's going to take you to, it's going to fill in your name and address, all the basics. And then once you hit save, it saves as you go through. So if you lose a page, every page before that is saved. So this does an automatic save. Um, I'm at olt.com. So I already put in, you know, um, this is just, you know, um, this is like actual numbers or, but all the like that person's name and address have been changed. So that's okay. So this person is going to be, um, you see the address, you see the name, social security number, date of birth, value status is single. They don't have any dependents, but if you have dependents, there's just a, there's a place for you to add them. You just add your children's name and things like that. And you'll get your deductions for children. And this is where you put your driver's license and, and start CSS start and finish date. We're just going to go through all of this. So we're starting from the beginning. And you just, you see, when you go down here, it's going to first, you're going to put personal info, contact, fouling status. If you don't know what your fouling status is, um, there is a tool you can use and it will say, help me determine my fouling status. So once you get to there, you'll see it. You can use that if you don't know what it is, because if you're single, obviously that's easy. But people who are married or divorced or going through different things, they don't really know what their status is sometimes. So there's a tool to help you once you click through and get to that filing status stage. So, so save and continue. All right. And this is how user friendly you can go in and um, at first, this refund was zero when I started. And as you put things in, let me just see. As you put things in, you'll see this number go up and down, up and down as you put in credits and deductions. So this is really cool. You can and you can if you mess up something, you can always go back before you submit it to the IRS and correct it. If it doesn't look right here, you will you can see that. So it's not done till it's done. You can always go back and do anything. So this is where you're going to put. Um, all of your income and you see how over here it says um driver's license after the driver's license information it says life events um wait, it's not supposed to be here income that i received i think this is on federal okay but either way either way it's income so it'll just naturally wait previous page after you go to driver's license info It naturally goes to personal info, life events. Okay. Did you earn money from a job? W-2, click it. Um, if you had, um, this would be crypto. A lot of people did this. We're going to go through this. And then a lot of people did um, 1099s. B, that's also for the crypto reporting, I think, 1099B. So people have Social Security. So you see how it's all here. You just click what applies to you if you were a business owner. 
Um, we're going to do that a little bit later. So we're going to do these first. So you click all that applies to you, then it will just go through everything back to back. Or you can just, if you forget something, you just go back to this. You would click over here, life events, and then it will go back to this page. You can always click over here and get back to where you are. So first we're going to put in jobs and wages. Save and continue return. And this person, um, I already, you would put add new W2 and I already put it in. So I'm going to show you what it looked like when we had to do it. So this is, if you would hit add W2, I'm not going to do it because I already did it, but if you were to, um, it would just go to this right here. This person has made $40,000 this year. So it's going to go with our little uh, test account here. And of a W-2, they worked they worked full time that year. And you'll notice that New York, we're doing a state in New York, and New York has pretty high taxes. So it's, it's going to be, they're going to get less back than you would if you lived in another state. But um, okay, this is just a, you know, an, a test account. So, and what you can do is, um, this is what your W-2 entry looks like, okay? And you see that right now this is highlighted. You're on your income area. The one thing I do, this is hidden when you start, but um, it, you can put click here for advanced options. You can check auto calculate, or you could put click here to block auto calculation so that you can put in what your employer gave you. And all you're going to do this is your W-2 form. So you would take, this is what a W-2 looks like right here. So, what you're going to do is you're going to take this and everything that says, you see how it says box number one, 98,500, box number two, 15,000. You're just going to match up the boxes. You could, if it's digital, you can just copy and paste it into the form, your W-2 form. If not, just type it, you know, no problem. And your employer's name will be right here and your name will be here. And the way you match up the forms, it's always look at the document. The, the official title is obviously W-2, W-2. So you just match up the document with um, the list in um, your software, which for us is olt.com, onlinetaxes.com, and just put in, type it in numbers as it is. All you're doing is copying and pasting here. And you see where it says, um, 15 um, U.S. state, it would say New York state wages, you just 17, you just match it up. So this is just an example, right? It doesn't even match what we're doing, but it's just to show you what a W-2 looks like when you get it in the mail or when you get it in your email. So you go back to your online taxes and you just put it in and you see where I told you to match up um, box one with one, two with two, three with three. Obviously, that W-2 didn't match. I'm just showing you what a W-2 match would like in a mail. I just didn't want to show anybody's personal information, so I used a dummy one. So that's all. This would be the company, and you would type in the federal income tax. This is very important. Also, you're going to see box 12. It usually is your 401k, and you'll hit, um, you'll, you'll type this in, right? These were typed in. It was blank, and I typed all these in. And this was the D. Uh, you drop down for D. And then um, your retirement account, whatever you took out for that year, this person contributed 815. Also, the company would usually match that. So, and this is a company where they have other investments. So, you're just seeing the 401k right now. They have other stock, which is not on here. Um, and then you would click retirement. If it's a retirement account, you go down here. This is where you would put your, your state 15. Um, the wages, 40000 local wages, 40815 because they're adding in the retirement money that they added. Um, local income tax, locality name will be New York City. Uh, once you click the state, it will drop down to the city um, that you can click for that. And that's pretty much W-2. You just enter those, copy and paste. It's, it's pretty simple. And you see how um, user-friendly this software is. And um, you would... You see how it says wages total 40000 but this, the Medicare Social Security is going to be a little bit higher because it's including this, the 401k for some reason. It's very strange how they do it. But that's just how all the states do it. So, And then so you would just you add your W-2, save and, return, save and return. If you have another one, you just add another W-2 and you just if and add and, and click save. 
and then we'll add another one. If you have like two or three W-2 jobs, you switch jobs during the year. This shows how much taxes were withheld. So we don't have to add any more. This person only had one job. I'm going to click done with W-2 category. We're going to move on to the next one. It's just for people who had um, savings for retirement. When we said that person had $815 in retirement that they had on, it was, um, here it is, this right here. And their W-2 was $815. Um, number 12 was a retirement contribution. Well, the next page is going to ask you this. You get credit for your going to, don't um, contribute to your retirement account. $850 in credit, you, uh, that carried over automatically. I did not put that there. They'll send you it in the mail and you'll know what you have to click. You know, if, if you see a form that says W-2, click this one. If you see a form that says 1099, click this one or go by the titles. And so next we're going to do interest income. Because we had, um, if you go to a bank, sometimes they'll give you a reward like $300 sign up with our bank, $400 sign up with our bank. And this is what, and they send you a 1099 INT. So you just add that there, taxable interest, and then you just add this. And what you would have hit first was add a new one for this person, but I already did it for you. So, so, I, so I don't have to click anything, but if I didn't, I would first put add, then it would just automatically go to this empty form and you just have to type in your bank. And this is what a 1099 looks like from a bank. Let me show you. Here it is, 1099 interest income. This is from a bank and um, it looks like that. It will be a dollar amount right here. And that's all you have to do is type in that and the bank address, it'll all be there. So that's pretty much copy and paste. If you get it digitally, you can just copy and paste it. If not, just type it in. So all you're going to do is just type in the bank's name. Um, your, your should just already be filled in, pre-filled in there. Just type in the simple amount and that's it. That's all they gave you. Just that one amount and then hit um, save and continue. This is will come from your bank if you don't, or maybe certain investments, what not everybody has, but if you get it, that's where you put it. Save and continue. All right, done with my bank interest. Okay, so save and continue and return. Do you have any foreign accounts or distribution from a foreign trust? So you can put yes or no. If it applies to you, then just follow the steps and just go through it. And then next is... Um, this is for people who invested in crypto. If you click crypto, but go to this capital gains and losses for the 1099, show more. Um, you will get this from crypto, Robinhood, BlockFi, all the big crypto companies will send you this. And um, yeah, and you'll and it'll, you'll just match it up. If there's something in one, you put it in one. There's something in two, you put it in two. You just match it up and you put it on to here. I will show ya. you hit. You would hit add a new transaction 1099B and then you would hit um, edit. Or you would hit add, but you already added it. So that's why it's already there. And you would hit add new transaction and you would put like crypto.com and it will ask you how many shares, like say you got a little bit of Amazon shares, when you acquired it, when you sold it, um, if you still held it at the end of the year, or if you sold it before the end of the year, it will be down here. And um, it's short term if you sold it in less than a year, I think it's long term, you sold it for more than a year. And keep in mind, and this is, you just copy and paste what's on the form they send you, the 1099B. Then you hit save, all right? And once you hit save, you can look here. This software, OLT, allows you to upload your capital gains sheet. Now, this is just someone who bought one something of Amazon. When you're, when you're doing crypto and um, when you're doing stock, you're going to be buying so many shares, maybe 
eight different companies and just trading. If you're a day trader, you're going to get maybe uh, 17 sheets of pages with long transactions on it. That's why they allow you to upload all your transactions easily. And I know all the crypto companies will send you a digital version. So you don't have to type in every individual transaction. You can upload it. Um, and crypto is very new to me. I pretty much have been doing taxes for years, but I don't want to speak on crypto too much. If you did crypto and it's, a, you know, I think it's, a, if it's over um, 600, you have to report it, but I think you have to report all crypto. I'm not really too sure, but since I'm new to crypto, I'm going to, you know, suggest that you consult a professional on that area because I'm not too sure about that, but that's just where you put crypto if you have it. I know with taxes, if there is an error, if the error is less than like uh, $500, something you really don't get a fine, it's when you get into the thousand or more error is where they fine you and penalize you. Otherwise, they just correct it themselves and ask you to agree to the correction in most cases. But so that's crypto. And then what is next? So we did capital gains, banking. All right. So, so we're just going to go with the, oh, if unemployment. That was um really big on the I mean it's always big but you know this year is kind of important um, we're going to do business income loss last because we want to do the self-employment all in one just in case anyone self-employed which a lot of people do are anytime you do anything on the side whether it's you know it could be you know performing arts it could be delivery um, painting anything you do on the side even if you have an eBay company you might if you do it as a business you can write that off as well but um, rental, if you have a rental property, and here's unemployment income, that's a big deal. Unemployment would be, if you had it, Form 1099-G, you'll get it in the mail. And the important thing about that is when I'm going to add it, I don't need to. This person was full-time, but just pretend that they were unemployed. We will put add a new 1099-G for unemployment, and you just enter what it says. It's really easy. It looks just like um, the 1099 where is it tonight? It looks just like this. Only it's going to have a G after it instead of an M-I-S-C. You can get that in the mail. It'll look like that. So, okay. So you would just add your, the government, whatever it was, New York, Pennsylvania, whatever. And then your name will already be pre-filled because you started, because you had this account. And then important is some states give you the option to either take taxes out during the unemployment or not. So make sure you get the state and the locality right and copy the correct um, information onto here. And um, it's just, you know, all a matter of matching up, you know, three with three, four with four, five with five, just match up the boxes and putting whatever number is in there. So you would, most people would choose a standard deduction because standard deduction is usually, um, so watch this. Standard deduction is usually twelve thousand dollars per person, and unless you're you paid more than twelve thousand cash out of pocket for like medical and other things, this is usually the best option. It will even tell you what the best option is for you. You don't have to take it, but the computer is usually right. Okay, so I mean, when it comes to standard deduction, you can take itemized, but it's usually going to be lower unless you had some really extraordinary expenses that are out of the ordinary. Okay, so. Um, are you a bona fide resident of Puerto Rico? This person is not. So, um, and then here it is, charity. You just keep going and going and hitting done with these and it'll go through everything. Um, and this is really big right here, these two. These are called your credits. And that's after, so very, this, is where you get, this is where you make your money at. And just make sure you select whatever applies to you. The system will walk through it. I wouldn't select everything. There are literally, there are literally over 80, 100 things to select. You don't want to be there all day. You know what applies to you. I'm just going to tell you the basics of what most Americans pick. So this is really interesting. We'll do this first. Residential energy credits. If you are a homeowner, you get credits for buying, a, a huge credit for buying a solar system, for updating, I think, your HCH. 
uh, HVAC to more efficiency or getting an efficiency refrigerator, stove, things like that. Um, energy credit. So you want to click on this. This person is not a homeowner, but if they were, you could say, I want to file for residential energy credit. Yes. And this is what you get. This is... You see how it says solar electric qualified. If you bought solar electric, you would know and the company would have sent you your proper document. So this is knowing what you get in the mail will tell you what you would put on your taxes. So it's going to be pretty self-explanatory based on what you receive in the mail throughout the year. You would know if you had small wind energy. You would know if you had geothermal heat. You would know if you had biomass. You would know you'd be looking for them already. So just kind of know that. Um, and I know New York people, they get credits for their electricity on their state. Even if they're not the homeowner, they get like a small credit. So, all right. So I'm just going to put no, but if I was this person, I might put yes. So, but they're not. Okay. So did you make any energy efficient improvements or resident energy property credits to your main home? This is for homeowners. This person is not, so we're going to skip it. Okay. And so that was really important to put and then there's something called very important education credits. So this is um, if you they will have sent you this. If you went to school and you pay cash, you can get up to eighty thousand dollars of that cash back over the time you're in school. Like if you spend six thousand a year in cash for school, you actually get all six thousand dollars of that back in cash as a credit in your refund. So that's really cool. Um, no, actually, you don't. Sorry about that you get let me read what you get um you get up to twenty five thousand dollars um you get the first two thousand back then anything over two thousand you get twenty five percent of that back and you have to make as a single person less than ninety thousand dollars to get this credit and this will apply up to, um, let me see. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's up to 40,000. Not really sure what the limit is, but um, yeah, you have to make less than $90,000 as a single person, or if you're married, you have to make less than um, $160,000 to get that benefit. So if you spent money on your school, make sure you um, apply, get that. They'll send, see, like I said, your school will send you this in the mail. So this, if this person went to school, which they did not, um, in New York, they would say they went to the school in the state of New York. Um, you have a 1098T form, yes, and you received the form. And then you would just put in, um, every school has a code. And when you put the school code in, that's when you get your credit back. That credit would go up to like, if you spent 2000 your refund would jump up to $2,000, $2,174 up here. So this is very easy to cut and paste. And you just put whatever the form says. Oh, uh, the 1098T. So that's a, some people might be using that. I think that's a good one. A lot of people are going to school. So... Huh. So now you can see you can always back out of stuff. Oh, I'm trying to, I'm having trouble getting out of this one. I'm trying to figure out what to do here. Even if you didn't receive the form, you can still estimate, look at your, look at your bills that you got from the school and just put it in manually as long as you have that school's FIN number. So that's another way to do it if they didn't send you a form for whatever reason. Okay, so just hit, okay, close and correct errors. Okay, and here's a really important one right here. This is the marketplace health insurance, which most people have. You might get a credit um, from getting health insurance. It will send you that automatically to your health insurance every month, and you'll see it on your bill. Um, so you would click marketplace health insurance at 1095A. You would have received that. So let me find that for you. Okay. It would look like this. And all you do is you take this 
um, amount in row A, row B, and row C, and it says 1095A, and you enter it into um, into the OLT form. So you would click Save and Continue Return, and you would say, did you receive a Form 1095A? You would click Yes, but I already entered it, so I click No, so it's already there as you see. But otherwise, you would click Yes, and then you would it would already be, and it would look like this when you arrived at it. And this is like, you see how um, you would just put in like whatever the health insurance company is, you would put all that in there. It would match up with the forms, number one, and you would um, click here to add cover. Make sure you add yourself, this one person here, added herself. And it's just all a matter of copying the form. And then when you get to here, um, you would put in how much you got, um, as you can see one two three rows you would just copy and paste that like you could just put it here once and then hit click and it will copy all these numbers down to the numbers below it because most of the time you're gonna be paying the same thing um you know over and over every month however if you move to a different state you would have to add a new um let's see 1095 for that state and you would have two forms instead of one so that's why they have that because not all the time it's going to be the same price every month let's just say um some people they don't even get a credit if they make too much money but if their income drops the government will refund you the credit you should have got so for example if i had this is what um this person got had to pay but the government paid this so if the government had not have paid this um it would have been zeros down here and when you get that they want to know what the second lowest cost silver plan was you don't really have to know the definition of this just know that you need this in here this is how you get your money back um and and if you see that it was right here this is what it was it was you just copy and paste a b c into um, A, B, and C here in your software. And if there is nothing here, if this is blank, which a lot of times it will be if you didn't get any credits at the beginning of the year, if for some reason you made more money but then you lost it, um, you can always get what it should have been by putting click here to find your SLCSP. That's how you get your money back. So make sure this is right. It will suggest if you need to if you need to do this. You would just go here and um, let me see something here. You just go to figure out your premium tax credit. And this is what they want you to do here when it says SLCP. Um, you would choose the tax year, 2021. What state did your household live in? All oh, the state of New York. And then it will give you the MLCP for whatever state you're in. 432 then you would just it, was, it was, should have been different but new york is too hard of a state because it has all these different things you have to log into the database so i just did kentucky as a generic example so it would have given you the numbers and then you would just put them over here you would put that and that middle thing right there that's all you would do so let me get back into the main area here
OK, so now that you have that, you just go through, hit save and return. And then if you have any more marketplace identifiers or anything from your company, your employer for health insurance, you would, you know, that will be in there too. Um, okay. And then here goes the premium tax credit. Um, did you, something about living in Alaska or, or Hawaii, just no and no for this person. If it applies to you, then do that. This will help you get your premium tax credit back um, if they overpaid or underpaid. And a lot of times you don't want to miss credits if you um, under if you under um, paid or if you overpaid, I should say. Um, and this is things about did you buy health insurance outside your family? This person did not. If it applies, go ahead and put it. This is the marketplace statement. Do you have any more to put in? This person has no because they just stayed in the same state the whole year. They didn't get. Um, you know, any other insurance from anywhere else. Then it says, were you eligible for any minimum essential coverage other than individual marketplace coverage? No. Okay. And this is the big doozy. Um, I should say the big benefit. You don't want to forget this. If you got COVID relief, this is under the payments refundable credits. You don't want to miss money. This is money you leave on the table. You see it says if you had sick leave and family leave for certain self-employed individuals. If yes, go through these steps. If it doesn't apply, you can always X out of it. Earn income credit is very important. You want to go through this. This person doesn't qualify because they made more than 21430 but the, the EITC is very great. If you're a low-income individual or a low-income first or third-year business owner, you want to make sure you don't leave that on the table. This is a high audit category. If you do it wrong, they're likely to audit you. It also can stall your, your getting your refund back. So make sure you do this accurately, you know, if, if you do that. But just follow all the steps and read everything and use these resources up here if needed. And that's the EITC. And then this is the good, the big one right here. This is the your um the stimulus if you miss the stimulus the recovery rebate credit is here under the payments refundable credits this is the, if you didn't get your like fourteen hundred dollar check when they were giving them out your supplemental or stimulus and it says just read all of this the recovery rebate credit economic impact payments the fourteen hundred dollars that they sent out and the six hundred dollars they sent out in 20 they sent out in 2020 and 2021 it says based on the information you've entered um you qualify for 1400 from if you missed your payment in 2021 um if you received an amount grade and calculate it please answer no um did you receive your full ep this person did if you didn't you would click no and then just um follow accordingly uh, what the steps are but this person did so we're going to get it. but if you need that that is there to get your credit if you didn't get it and That is one of the main ones. And these are other things you can always file for right here. Uh, just give me one second here. These are not common, but here they are. It's going to go down to the other forms, underpayment of tax, worksheets, um, reduction of tax attributes, all types. A lot of people don't have these, but they're there if you need them. Just look over them, but I doubt they will apply to most people. Here it is, the error. Now I'm going to delete it. Boom. From that education. There we go. Delete. And then here is if your retirement savings contribution, it's already filled out. Yeah, that was filled out from before. All right, here's your credits. Okay, so now we're at the, let me get to the correct place here. Okay, so now we're basically, we are at the end. So that's pretty much everything. But let me go back and do 
one thing for people who are self-employed income. Okay, so we're going to go to business income or loss. All right, so you're going to fill out all these business income or loss schedule C. You're just going to fill out your business information, um, what you earned um, minus the cost of goods, vehicle expenses, other expenses. There's going to be um, business. You can either keep track of your exact mileage and do that, or you can do something called like the standard rate where it's just like, I don't know if what it is, 29 cents per mile, and you just multiply that by the number of miles you drove. And you have to look and see um, when you can take. I think once you take the um, standard rate, you always have to take it for that same business every year. I don't really know. There's something about that. Just read the instructions. Um, it's very important. And then you can make sure you write off your home. If you use an office in your home or your room, your bedroom as an office, you know most people's room is like... Um, 15 by 15 let me see here let's see square footage okay so um most bedrooms are you know 12 let me see 15 by 15 or offices so you would just do 15 times 15 which is 225 square feet. So you're going to make sure you, you can write off a percentage of your home. And like if you are a performing artist, you can write off like your clothes, but only clothes that can't double as everyday wear. Like, you know, if you have a police uniform or a nurse uniform, and you're not actually a nurse, you just wear it for like interview, like what do you call that, auditions? If it's a specialized outfit, then you can write it off. But if it's a pair of jeans that you also wear, you know, to shopping or whatever you do, then that's you're wearing it every day. So it's not considered only business wear. So just keep in mind of um, writing off your business expenses and keep your receipts and things like that. And you're also going to wait. There's something. Hold on. I'm just I'm not I'm not this person did not work at a um business. So hold on for a second. Okay. So you're going to have a schedule C that is for when you your income um you want to add all your 1099s up. and put them on here. And for a Schedule C, every business has to have its own Schedule C and category. Like you don't want to mix a delivery business with a dance school. You know, you have, those are separate categories for the government. So make sure each business has its own Schedule C. But every Schedule C will go on here. So that's very important. And then you will have... Let me see. What are these supposed to be? You can always upload some forms here. I don't really know what it's for, but it will tell you. Um, just going to e delete these because this does not apply to this person. Okay. If you own your own business, you can walk through all of these. You're going to need these. Depreciation of any desks or possibly your car or any office furniture. 
would do there. Do not forget to do your self-employment tax. If you do not pay your self-employment tax, um, when they calculate it, it will be much higher. So make sure you're only taxing on your income. Deduct your expenses, and then after you do that, they will tax your income only after you take out your expenses. So if you made $10,000, but you had 4000 in expenses, you will only pay taxes on $6,000. And some people will have self-employed health insurance, but most won't. So make sure you do a C and a SE for every business. And if you have a delivery plus a dance school, you will have a, a schedule C and a SE for the dance school, and then another schedule and a SE for the delivery business. Those will be separate because they're separate types of entities. And that's very important. Don't forget that if you're self-employed and make sure you take all your expenses. And also what you can do, and, and it may be too late to do this, but if you are self-employed before the end of 2021, you could have incorporated before I think it's maybe the last day of December or something the last week. Even if you don't incorporate into the last month of 2021, you can consider yourself a corporation for the entire year. So always remember that because if you incorporate um, you protect your personal assets. They can't sue you for your personal house, your personal bank account. They can only, if something happens, like a slip and fall in your business or whatever, or if you have a dance school, they can only sue you for what's in your corporate bank account and not everything you own. So if you only have 2000 in your corporate bank account, then that's all they can take you for. So um, just keep it in mind that uh, there's benefits to a corporation. There's also benefits to an LLC. Um, keep in mind that once you become a corporation, um, you do have to file with the State Department of Finance separately. It is a lot of a little bit of extra work every year. You're paying taxes to a different, completely different um, place than the IRS, and you are paying quarterly statements. So just keep in mind that uh, having this corporation is a lot of work. LLC might be a little bit different, Paige. And I said there's all these things. Low-income housing credit, not sure what that is, but that sounds interesting. Um, foreign financial assets, a lot of people do not invest in foreign countries. Um, see if any of these things apply. Most likely they won't. That's why they're all just bundled up here at the end. And hit save and continue. And then after that, you are all done. And um, your first year, this will take a little bit. But after a while, you get so used to using this software, it will become, you know, very easy for you. And so, and then, it, and then you can apply some of the next year's taxes. Most people don't, but that's up to you. And um, it tells you everything, the income, the deduction standard. The taxable income is only 28000 for this person. They paid 3000 taxes plus some change and 3176 And they're getting $174 back. Um, so... And you hit save and return, return, and then this you can add a direct deposit if you want. You can put it into multiple accounts plus a paper check plus buy a U.S. bond through this website. Some websites allow you to get your own personal prepaid debit card. I do not like debit cards because they're issued by one company. That company is online and not in your neighborhood. And if there's any issues, you can't go and visit them. Then hit save and continue return, and that. Here is your state filing. Um, it's, it's really simple. It says check here if you don't want to complete your state at this time. You could just check here and then just submit your federal, but your state is also due on Monday the 18th of 2022. So you may not want to wait on that. I don't know why you would. Look how easy. Uh, look how easy the state filing is. One moment. Okay, so the county where you live, let me see, is there a such thing as New York County, I guess? I don't know if it'll be Manhattan, but school district would probably be Manhattan, I guess New York City. Uh, 
LMN Manhattan. Okay. And then NYC resident, months lives, all 12. Um, Yonkers resident, none of the above. Did not work or live in Yonkers. That's if you live in New York. I read and certified. This will be whatever your state is, it will say this. You just answer the questions, it's applicable. And then please set New York City status. Oh, full year city resident. Sorry about that. 12 months live there. Okay. It will stall you. You want to generate estimated payment vouchers? Most people don't pay ahead. Um, you can if you want. It's always a good idea. If your employer doesn't take out enough, you might want to just contribute some throughout the year. But, you know, it's not very common. But uh, well, at least I don't really know if it's common, but I haven't heard of it so far. Um, no vouchers. Okay. This is if you want to just send a check to them every couple of months just to stay ahead of your taxes. So you can do that or just click no if you don't want to. And... And then here it is. It's saying um, it already completed your state for you. Okay. And return attachments. Okay. So you see your state taxes are already done. Well, so look at this. This is your federal. The 10, 1040. Look how uh, pretty that is. It, it, it tells you your, um, your name. And it has um, your refund. It has all the information down here. Some of it is actual information, so I'm going to leave that there. Um, it tells you that your refund is going to be $174 right here. Amount you want refunded, 35A, $174. And then um, it's just all the information right there. So, um, yeah, so once you go to here where it says tax summary, you can look at federal, state, and you can print all your forms. So this is your state. You can open it and you see how it filed it for you. It has um, everything filled out for you. And it will just electronically sign it for you. How much are we getting back from the state? If any, it will tell you. The refund from the state will be 78B, $225, a paper check. So it tells you you're getting $225 back from the state. And always make sure that the SSN is correct. That's what they want you to look at on every sheet. That's very important. And like I said, if anything is wrong, you're not bound to it. Go back and change it if you see something's not right. It's not submitted until you submit it. And here's any attachments they may add. The, the, the um, health insurance marketplace statement. Um, and all of your crypto statements will be attached here if you uploaded them. And um, in the previous crypto area. And so you just hit save and return. Click here to e-file your federal return. And notice it says your return will not be filed at this time. Continue with the software, you, and we will later give consent to e-files. You're not e-filing yet. If you do not want to e-file, if you don't trust it or you don't want to use direct deposit, I mean, we well, don't have to use direct deposit anyway, but you can just e-file and still use paper mail for to get your um, refund. You can just not file it and just and just print it out maybe for free at the library or at your job or at home if you have a printer. And you can um, just print all those documents I showed you earlier and then just put it in the mail. You don't have to send it electronically for, for whatever reason you don't want to. But I love to e-file. You get your money back faster. So I'm just going to do e-file. Yes. All right. And then you have to enter your prior year information to move forward. Let's see if it will give me anything. <sighs> And then so just you just invent you know um, a five digit pen, and then it says upgrade to premium. You, you can um, file your. It says revisit. It's unfinished for some reason. 
Okay. Are you a part year resident of New York? No, this person's full time. Do you want to file a fiduciary income tax? No. Um, not applicable. Did your spouse? No. Enter the number of days spent in New York City in 2021. We're just going to put 360. They went for vacation for five days. So New York City resident, full year of city. Yonkers never lived there. Okay, special condition. Oh, this doesn't apply. Special condition. This is for combat veterans. If it applies, then go ahead and select it. New York has a lot of different things that they do that are very special. So um, what is your permanent home address and the county where you lived? School district is Manhattan. And if you feel like any of these apply, go ahead and visit them. But uh, most of them will already be done just based on what you get in the mail. Just foul what that. And these are things they always, people in New York get asked extra questions. They get extra benefits. Um, this person rents. Okay. Just make sure you answer all the questions and how they apply to you. And notice this, you get a credit of $63. And um, yeah, so there are some credits that people in different states get. And your New York State tax refund, it's still to, uh, $225. You could Okay, save and return. You see it switch from unfinished to prepared. So once it says that, you're good. And so this is basically you're at the end. So that's basically everything. It's just going to ask you a few more. I don't want to go beyond that. I don't want to file this return because it's not supposed to be filed. It's just an example. So, um... That should be pretty much it. And, you know, I hope that you um, learned a lot here and feel comfortable doing it on your own. You can always do it on your own and then take it to H&R Block or TurboTax and have them just um, do it themselves and then compare and see if you did it right. And then once you have the confidence that you did it right, you can start doing it on your own the next year or this year or whatever. So it's always good to do your, you know, um, software is user friendly. You can use other software like, you know, Tax Act or Turbo Tax, whatever you, you think works best for you. Um, so, you know, if there are, um, there's something I do. I just, I help friends and family like do their taxes. I've been doing mine for over 10 years and, um, I'm going to do probably a video on like how to stop yourself from getting audited and how to get the fastest refund. I'm going to probably do some other tax related items as well because financial health is very important. And on this channel, you know, we talk about, you know, health related topics, things like that, just everything that will better your life. So um, please do click the subscribe and the like button. It will really help me to get more exposure to other people and, you know, get more exposure for my channel and as well as help others learn um, what you have learned. And we appreciate you stopping by my video and please do have a very great rest of your day.